With the 2020 Grinder Showdown series complete, this video will answer a number of questions that you have asked. So, number one, why wasn't there more detail? Well, in a low information environment, any bits of detail take on enhanced and at times unintentional significance. I was determined to ensure that the focus remained on the end cup and in doing so, attempted to jettison as many other factors as possible, namely workflow and perceived value. This is why I did not include any footage of the grinders in use, as it would have provided information about workflow, aesthetics, and other details that can fundamentally alter your perspective on the unit's viability. And I really wanted to focus on the cup above all else. So, number two, what about the Lagom P64? So, I had a Lagom order, but canceled it whenever the shipment to the United States was pushed back. But was I upset? Well, not really. On the manufacturer's website, the unit is pitched as not too much, not too little, just the right amount, explicitly signaling that the unit is not aiming to be the best. Given the nature of the test and seeing the two value stand-ins via the Nishin Ode, this unit would have been a clear outlier, and I really think that the only reason that people keep asking about it is because it's just new and it's a single-dose grinder. If it had come out a year ago, I don't think it would be on the list. Number three, what about the EG1? Well, Involving the EG-1 would have taken us down another rabbit hole, 80 millimeter burrs, but not just one burr set, as you can get three different factory options for it. That would have added excessive complexity on top of an already arduous task. Well, if you ruled that out, then why did you evaluate the 80 millimeter Ditting Lab suite? Well, the opportunity arose after the completion of the initial round, and at the time it was just too good to pass up as it uses the same burrs from the Malconic Peak and I'd tasted the classic Ditting 804 for years, I, I jumped at the chance to be able to try it. So what about workflow? What were some of the highlights? Well, the Nish's dosing chamber that shields you from the flying beans is a nice touch. The Versalab's spring-laden portafilter is great if you want flexibility and want to go hands-free. The Ultra did the best job of creating a nice fluffy mound of grounds in the center of the basket. What about annoyances in workflow? Well, I had repeated issues with the beans not going into the burrs with the Ode and with the Nish when using WDT. I did not experience this on the other grinders. Here's a popular one. Should you buy a Versalab? You need to be willing to deal with the quirks, to put it lightly. Both of my units have jammed if I pour beans in too quickly. Now, I understand that the revised M4 and Titus versions do not seem to suffer from this choking, but again, you must have your eyes open whenever you go into that experience. So why did I keep Max over Ultra? The 98 millimeter burrs that I kept didn't come with either grinder. And yes, I could have mounted them into the Ultra, but I like three things about the Ultra. Like the WDT tool, like the funnel, and I like the price. As you can see here, I kept both of these and use them daily. But when it came down to keeping a grinder, there were two big things that I did not like. Size and workflow. Yes, the Ultra did a great job of getting that nice mound in the center, but the exit shoot system is what drove me crazy. Whereas Max's, just like this MC4 here, is a single piece of a magnetic attachment that just snaps on, the Ultra had a four-piece shoot where there's two magnetic parts and two pieces of like tin foil that you have to maneuver and manipulate in order to get all of the grounds out of the basket. And I never could get the area completely free of coffee every time. I was always having to remove the shoot system, brush it all away, and then go and pull my shot. Now, I understand that that grinder is a work in progress, and I really hope that they fix that, else it would be very good. In addition, Max is considerably smaller, and it does not bug me with this every time I grind coffee. So, did I try SSP burrs in the Ode? No. And I fundamentally question the impulse to switch out this burr set. Note that the only vocal complaints about this grinder not going fine enough come from near exclusively V60 users. When you say it doesn't grind fine enough, it's essentially just for cone filter drips. Remember, Fellow made it for their flat bottom pour over system. And there's this question of, did they somehow mess up and inherently make this bad product? No, they made it to fit their system view in their eyes are the problem. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, that's an entire other debate. But at this point, I do not really see the value in swapping out the burrs. There's nothing fundamentally offensive about the ghost burrs that they picked. They said they liked them. I liked them as well. The question is, if you need to have some 
powdery fine grind for your your the brewing method that you're going with it you guess you have to switch them out or i don't know suck it up and wait longer brew more aggressively stir do something to compensate for it but don't immediately go hey you know what i'm gonna buy this grinder and you know what before i've tasted it before anyone else has tasted it you know what we're gonna do we're gonna throw a 200 dollars upgrade on it because that's exactly what happened with this grinder it's what's happening with other products over the last couple of years this fetishization of third-party burrs, not just SSP, but any of the other burrs, whether it's Gorilla, and there's this idea that Confitex burrs are gonna be really, really great, and there's just this idea that somehow the original manufacturers are all wrong, whether that's Malkonig, whether that's Fellow, Mazer, and I, I guess that there's a bit of arrogance in the community that somehow you, the you at home, the user in the collective hive mind of the internet, are somehow better than the people that do this for a living. And of course, there are situations in which that is true, but immediately assuming that the manufacturer is wrong is, uh, put bluntly, a psychotic impulse and everyone needs to cut it out. So yeah, I think there is value to swapping out burrs into the ode, being able to get a different particle mixture, but the impulse to immediately jump to the conclusion where we need to just get rid of the, you know, the original burr set, it, it really needs to stop. And I don't mean just with the Ode, I mean with all grinders. I'm so sick of reading about it, especially with people that, again, haven't even tasted the grinder yet, haven't evaluated their use case, but they're going, you know what, shut up and take my money. Great business model, apparently. So yeah, if you are happen to be a, a burr manufacturer, good job. I mean, I guess that you've either pissed off your clients or taken their money willingly. So yeah. So, that ends the Q&A for the Grinder Showdown series. More may come. These have been the most popular questions so far. I hope that yours was answered. Again, please like and subscribe to continue seeing videos like this. More Grinders are coming in the Showdown series down the road. Not directly head-to-head -head like the, the 2021 was, but again, as I pulled off in the middle of this, uh, this video, uh, this is the shoot from a, a model of Conical 4 from Confitech, so there are more grinders coming down the line that I'm continuing to evaluate because, again, perfection is a moving target, right? We always want to be trying to do one better and find the next best thing in flavor. So, yeah, happy 2021. Thanks for sticking with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please share it with your friends. Come on the journey with us. Thank you.